Beneath Japan's serene landscapes and bustling cities lies one of the most dangerous geological battlegrounds on Earth. Every day, without warning, the ground shifts, sometimes subtly, sometimes with terrifying force. Recently, a staggering swarm of over 1,000 earthquakes rattled Japan's Takara Islands in just two weeks, shaking not only the land, but also the nerves of an already earthquake-weary nation. But could these tremors be more than isolated events? Could they be the harbingers of something far more catastrophic? Scientists warn that Japan is on the brink of a megaquake, a magnitude 8 or 9 monster capable of killing hundreds of thousands and reshaping the country's coastline in minutes. With the specter of disaster looming and social media fueling viral doomsday predictions, fear is once again gripping the public imagination. But beyond the panic lies a deeper, more urgent story, one rooted in science, history, and the extraordinary efforts to prepare for the inevitable. What do these recent earthquakes tell us about the immense geological forces building beneath Japan? How close are we to the next seismic cataclysm? And what will it take to survive it? Let's find out. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Nestled along the volatile Pacific Ring of Fire, Japan lies at the intersection of four major tectonic plates. The Pacific Plate, the Philippine Sea Plate, the Eurasian Plate, and the North American Plate. These colossal slabs of Earth's crust are in constant motion, grinding, colliding, and diving beneath one another. The result is one of the most seismically active regions on the planet. This tectonic collision zone creates subduction trenches like the Nankai Trough and the Japan Trench, where one plate dives beneath another. These regions are capable of producing the planet's most violent earthquakes, known as megathrust earthquakes. These types of earthquakes come with devastating side effects, massive tsunamis, widespread liquefaction, infrastructure collapse, and fires that can spread uncontrollably through broken gas lines and shattered electrical grids. In Japan, earthquakes are not rare. They are a daily reality. On average, Japan experiences over 1,500 quakes annually, though most go unfelt. But every few decades, the stress accumulated along locked fault lines releases in catastrophic bursts, as seen in the 1995 Kobe quake and the 2011 Tohoku disaster. Beginning in late June 2025, an unusual and alarming earthquake swarm gripped the Takara Islands, a remote volcanic chain located in Kagoshima Prefecture in southern Japan. Over the course of just two weeks, more than 1,000 quakes were recorded. On the busiest day, residents experienced 183 separate tremors, with the strongest reaching a magnitude of 5.5. Though none of the quakes caused significant structural damage or resulted in fatalities, the psychological toll was profound. Residents were placed on high alert, with local authorities warning of potential landslides and encouraging preparedness measures in case larger seismic events followed. Scientifically, the Takara swarm wasn't unprecedented. Japan has experienced similar clusters in the past, particularly in tectonically complex zones. But what made this event significant was the context, occurring in a year already marked by heightened seismicity, amid growing anxiety over the country's broader earthquake risk. It wasn't just the quakes themselves that alarmed people, it was what they might be leading toward. Among all the seismic hazards facing Japan, the greatest concern lies beneath the waters of the Nankai Trough, this geologically active trench is capable of producing so-called megathrust earthquakes of magnitude 8 or greater. According to a 2025 government report, the likelihood of a Nankai Trough megaquake occurring within the next 30 years now stands at an alarming 80%. The consequences of such an event have been extensively modeled. The Japanese cabinet office estimates that nearly 300,000 people could die in the worst-case scenario, with more than 1 million displaced and direct economic losses, exceeding $1.8 trillion. What makes the Nankai threat so terrifying is not just its size, but its proximity to major population centers. 
Cities such as Nagoya, Osaka, and Shizuoka lie within the danger zone. Shaking would be intense and prolonged, and the tsunami could easily overwhelm existing seawalls and flood defenses. Furthermore, because the Nankai Trough is divided into multiple segments, there is the possibility of a cascade rupture, in which one segment fails and triggers the rupture of adjacent sections, producing a far more massive quake than a single segment rupture. In Japan, where natural disasters often blend with culture and mythology, scientific discourse doesn't always exist in isolation. This was particularly evident in early July 2025, when widespread fear was amplified by an unexpected source, a manga prediction. The Future I Saw, a comic book by artist Ryo Tatsuki originally published in the 1990s, resurfaced on social media due to its eerie claim that a devastating earthquake and tsunami would strike Japan on July 5, 2025. Though intended as fiction, the prediction quickly went viral, where local superstitions and cultural sensitivities elevated the rumor into mainstream concern. Travel agencies reported cancellations, and flight data showed a sharp dip in arrivals to Japan from overseas. The hashtag July 5th Megaquake trended online, spreading misinformation faster than official agencies could counter it. Even Tatsuki herself, now retired and rarely making public appearances, issued a statement clarifying that her manga was never meant as a literal prediction and that she strongly discouraged people from taking it seriously. Nonetheless, the power of suggestion proved strong. Across Japan, people began hoarding bottled water and non-perishable food items. Some families temporarily relocated from coastal areas, and supermarkets in certain districts reported empty shelves. In the age of satellites, deep-sea sensors, and high-resolution seismic arrays, one might expect that earthquake prediction would be a solved problem. But even in Japan, a world leader in geoscience, the truth is far more complex. While researchers can identify zones of elevated risk and model stress accumulation along fault lines, they cannot forecast the exact timing or magnitude of an impending quake. Earthquakes occur when stress along a fault exceeds the friction holding it in place, causing a sudden release of energy. But the exact tipping point, the moment of failure, remains elusive. That said, what scientists can do is identify areas where the risk is significantly higher based on historical patterns, plate movement data, and geodetic measurements. One of the most closely monitored regions in Japan is the Nankai Trough. Here, the Philippine Sea Plate grinds beneath the Eurasian Plate, accumulating seismic strain year after year. The result is a seismic time bomb, one whose fuse may already be burning. Past events provide a chilling guide. The 1944 Tonankai earthquake struck the eastern part of the trough. Just two years later, the 1946 Nankai earthquake ruptured the western segment. Both quakes caused widespread devastation, and together, they offer a template for what a future megaquake might look like. The recurrence interval for major Nankai events is roughly 90 to 150 years, with nearly 80 years having passed since the last rupture Many scientists believe that the region is entering a period of heightened seismic potential. Faced with a mounting probability of a devastating event, Japan has taken significant steps to strengthen its disaster preparedness. In 2025, the government unveiled a comprehensive update to its National Earthquake Response Strategy. It includes stricter timelines for seismic retrofitting of public buildings, mandatory annual reviews of high-risk regions, improved evacuation routes, and a significant expansion of tsunami shelters along vulnerable coastlines. Schools and workplaces now conduct regular earthquake and tsunami drills, and emergency supply kits are being subsidized in some districts. Early warning systems, already among the best in the world, are being enhanced to deliver faster and more localized alerts. This includes integration with mobile networks to send vibration-triggered notifications to smartphones within seconds of a detected tremor. And yet, despite all technological and institutional advancements, the core dilemma remains. When will the next big one strike? The recent earthquake swarm in the Takara Islands. The viral panic over a manga prediction. 
and the intensifying focus on the Nankai Trough all point to a country on edge. But Japan is not paralyzed by this threat. Instead, it is actively rethinking how cities are built, how communities are educated, and how science and public communication must evolve together. The probability of a Nankai megaquake occurring within the next 30 years remains high, perhaps alarmingly so. But through careful monitoring, strategic planning, and community engagement, Japan continues to push the boundaries of what it means to live safely in an unsafe place. In the end, earthquakes may be unpredictable, but human response need not be. Preparedness, vigilance, and empathy are the best tools Japan has, not just to survive the next megaquake, but to recover from it stronger than before.